In this last video, we'll add some styling, some overrides to the default bootstrap, colors and fonts and that sort of thing. We'll make these rounded, nice circles, add a box shadow, a gradient to the background, some hover effects. So let's get started. In my index.css, I'm gonna give the entire uh, body a background, which is a gradient. So two colors, sort of this light peachy color and then this light sea foamy color. I don't know what you would call that. And it looks like this. So that's going to just go across the entire body, every page. Okay. Next, let's add in a new font. So I have a Google Fonts link for Source Sans Pro, and I gave it two font weights, so we can use 200 and 400. Both are pretty lightweight. And I'm just going to make the font family here, Source Sans Pro. If you're not familiar with Google Fonts, uh, it's super simple, but I have a couple of uh, earlier projects where we use it, and I go into more detail. Okay, so that's changing the font on everything. Looks decent enough. Next, let's work on these individual dog items, these images. So let's, uh, let's go to that CSS file, which is the dog list.css. And I guess the first thing we can do is make them black and white. So that's going to be all images inside of a dog. Oh, I've already done that up here, haven't I? And we'll give them a filter of grayscale. So that should make them all black and white. But then when I hover, I want that filter to go away. So once again, dog image, and then we'll set filter to be none. And that needs to be when we hover. Okay, let's see if it works. I hover, great. But I also want it to work when I hover over the link, not just the image. So I'm gonna tweak it so that instead of the image being hovered, these styles are applied whenever a dog div is hovered to the image. And there we go. It works if I hover over the link or the image. Okay, uh, also I'm gonna give each dog a box shadow. So here's the box shadow I went with. We have two. First one is slightly darker, 0.3 opacity or alpha channel. And then the second one is lighter and a little smaller. And that's what it looks like. But next, I'm going to round them, make them circular. So that's done with border radius. So we'll do a border radius of 100%. I think we can get away actually with just 50%. Is that going to work? Yeah. So 100% to overkill. So that gives us the border radius. And everything still looks okay here as we grow and shrink. Uh, I'm going to add a transition so that when I hover, it's not immediate. But before I do that, we're gonna get into this fancy underline here that I currently don't have, but if you remember, I had this animation when you hover, this underline grows from the center outwards, and you can actually do that with a real underline. The way that we do it is by faking it, by putting an element down here that will grow its width as you hover. So I, I took this from a code pen. Um, this is not something that I'm particularly good at coming up with on my own. So I'm not gonna write it line by line. I'm just gonna show you the styles. The first thing we'll do is go to our dog list component. Let me shut some of these down here just to make it easier to see what I'm working on. We're gonna go to this link tag and give it a class name of, mm, let's do underline. And now we can go to our CSS and select that link. So dot underline. And just be, let's be more specific in case there's more than one dog or more than one underline. Okay, and inside of here, I'm gonna begin by just setting text decoration to none. And that should get rid of that underline effect. Okay, next, we've got a whole bunch of styles. Okay, so I just quickly pasted a bunch of them in. So there's a couple things I'll go over. We're setting display to be inline block. We're setting the line height. Text transform makes everything uppercase, as you can see there. We're also spe uh, spacing out the letters, giving them a new color, text align center, new font size, some margin, position relative. And why are we giving it a solid transparent border? Well, that will become clear in just a little bit. Right now, nothing is happening when we hover. It just, well, we have this where the color is changing, black and white, uh, but the link itself is not changing. So now we're going to work on getting that underline to animate. So below that, rather than actually adding in a separate element, like a span, what we can use is the CSS pseudo selector after. Okay, so underline after, colon after, is going to basically add in an element after this underline. Uh, this 
this anchor tag that has the class of underline. So you can't actually see it right now because the content is set to an empty string. But if I add something in like, hello, you'll see that it adds a new element in that's not actually in our HTML. So you usually only do this if you're doing some sort of animation or effect um, or an icon maybe. You don't want to actually be adding in like new markup, new elements, uh, or new text. That is important. You want to just keep this after stuff to decorative. So we have an empty element that has a height of four pixels. That will be the height of our underline that animates in. A width of 0%. Now this transition, uh, this comes from the code pen. I didn't type it myself. You could use any transition built in or just create a, a cubic Bezier curve. Then we've got a position absolute, a background color, so it will be a white line. But right now we're not seeing it because width is 0%. So now we're going to say when a dog is hovered, we're going to set the underline after, and we're gonna give it a width of 100%. And you'll see as I hover, it's still not perfect, but we're getting this underline appearing. What we need to do is just move it over. So we're animating that width, as you can see here, transition on the width and the left. So now we're also going to set the top and the left. And so these are going to move it over, as you can see. And that's really all we have to do. Now again, I didn't come up with this on my own. This is from a great code pen, I'll include the link. But it looks pretty nice, I think. Um, it's a nice little effect. If you want to play with it, change the color or change the height, for example. You can get a thicker underline. That's a little chunky. I'm going to go back to four pixels. But what we're doing, again, is adding this element that doesn't have any content inside of it or has a space. And it has no width, but it has a height. And then it has a background color. And then as you hover, we are expanding its width and we're animating that right here giving it a transition. Yeah, that's all there is to that. Uh, I'm going to add a hover effect as well to this, or a transition when I hover over that image. So to my dog image, we'll do a transition, and we'll just do 0 0.4 seconds ease. Okay, looks good enough. Last thing on this page, uh, it's a little cramped here, uh, so we can actually add some spacing without having to write CSS. We can add margin to this, as well as maybe to the link if we want to space it out a bit, using some bootstrap classes that we get for free. I can do margin top, and let's do four maybe. And that adds some space there, and then I can do margin bottom four, but there's also an alternative, which is margin y four. So margin y four is top and bottom. And there we go, we have a little space, if we wanted to add a bit more, we could do five instead, and we get more space. One thing that's catching my eye, we transitioned everything. I don't know if you like how that looks, where the border radius is transitioned as well. So I think I'm going to just change this to be transition instead of all. I'm only going to transition the filter. So now, as I refresh the page, nothing is changing, or nothing is transitioning, but these filters, the black and white grayscale filter is going on and off with the transition. Okay, and eh, I think this is okay. It might be a little bit too much margin there, but I'm gonna leave it. Uh, if you wanted to, you could just do a different margin top and margin bottom. You could do margin top three, margin bottom five. Okay, the last thing I'll do is add a couple quick styles to the cards here. We'll add that same transition, the grayscale hover thing, as well as a box shadow around the card. So that will be quick. We already have our dog details CSS. I'm going to start by making sure that my component dog details JS has, okay, we do have a dog details and dog details card class. So I'm going to use the dog details card. Open that file again. Where'd you go? So dog details dash card. And we'll begin by giving it that box shadow. I'm just going to steal it from here. Let's see how that looks. Mm, doesn't look like it wants to work. Did I import this file? Dog details CSS. Ah, well, that's why. Import dot slash dog details dot CSS. Okay, so there's our box shadow. Next, I'm going to work with the same hover. 
So the way that we have it now, it's inside of a dog, all images. We could just say all images in general, and that would apply here, but then we have that problem with the border radius, so we could move this out. I'm just going to break a bit of a cardinal rule and duplicate some CSS, which is okay. It's We don't have much CSS. So we'll ignore the width and the border radius and the box shadow, but we'll add these transitions in to the dog details card images. So let's change this dog details card image. And then when you hover over dog details card, we'll make the image have a filter of none. And I need to go back here and make sure that I save. And there we go. So you hover, we get that color back, it's grayscale when you're not hovering, and you can hover over anywhere on the card. And we have that box shadow, and that's pretty much it. Awesome. I guess one small suggestion, we could make the image part of the link. Right now you have to click here. You could just wrap the whole thing in a link tag, or you could use the history API, this.props.history.push, so that when you click on here, it would take you to whatever route you need to go to. All right, we're done now. A lot of styling. Hopefully you like this little effect. If not, let me know. Oh, that does remind me. I was going to add a little margin here. So we'll go to the dog list and to this H3. I'll give it a class name of margin top three. And that just pushes it down a bit. Okay. Otherwise, we are done. We've got all this working. I can go to some other route that doesn't exist. And it redirects me. Awesome.